Recently we uh, published a paper on suicide prevention rather provocatively, intentionally, uh, with the tag, a hot idea, hot air or sham. And uh, in it we did a focused systematic review looking at commonly used suicide prevention programs in schools, specifically signs of suicide and yellow ribbon, and also a highly distributed uh, suicide awareness program for communities uh, called Safe Talk. The evidence for yellow ribbon and signs of suicide is similar to what we had previously reported, there being no evidence of effectiveness in the prevention of suicide. The quality of the research is poor and using independent structured analysis uh, the programs are not ready for distribution. In fact, one of the recent papers on signs of suicide actually showed that the individuals in the control group did better than the individuals in the intervention group and that the intervention group had five suicide attempts and the control group had none. That information was interestingly enough buried in the paper, not mentioned in the discussion, and not mentioned in the abstract, which is called the program promising. The Safe Talk entire global database in the peer reviewed literature is a study in Glasgow in which 17 veterinary students reported that they liked the program and they felt more comfortable talking about suicide after the program. This is not evidence of effectiveness, nor is it evidence of safety. Now, we should not be using programs if they're not effective. If suicide is a very, very important issue. It is a public health concern. It is a clinical concern. It is a tragedy for any family and any community. People deserve to be told the truth about what interventions are being applied. If an intervention is being applied to prevent suicide and there is no evidence that that intervention is working, people need to be told that. The other thing is that we also don't know if these interventions don't cause any harm. And I've heard people say, well, you don't have evidence that they cause harm, direct evidence, so it's okay. Well, standing on your head doesn't cause harm but we don't use that as a suicide prevention strategy. You know, there are lots of reasons to use things, but the best reason is that it works. And you know, I'm not so sure about it, it doesn't cause any harm. Does talking about suicide in the community, on social media, on the media, to each other, lead to increased suicide rates? We don't know. We do know that suicide rates in this country, in young people, particularly girls, has gone up recently. And it's gone up in parallel to a lot of this talking about suicide. Is this all because of safe talk? No, that obviously is not the case. But does it contribute? Maybe. It at least should give us pause for concern. The other thing that we need to remember about this is that the clinical, and I mean with a health provider and a patient in a trusted situation, in the clinical context when a health provider asks an individual who is suffering about suicide and that individual then discusses their ideation and potential plan and intervention can occur, we know that that can be helpful. We do not know if that kind of talking about suicide in the agora is helpful or not or potentially harmful. We just don't know that. And we have a responsibility. We have a responsibility to all those people who have died by suicide. We have a responsibility to all the families and loved ones of people who have died by suicide. We have a responsibility to our society. 
we have a responsibility to use our public money with good transparency and with good results. And if we're not discharging that responsibility by actually showing that suicide prevention interventions actually prevent suicide, that they decrease suicide rates, that people live because of them, we're not being honest and transparent. Thanks for listening. I'm Stan Kutcher with the Sun Life Financial Chair and Adolescent Mental Health.